Welcome to China Paradigm, a show powered by Dashi Consulting, where we interview seasoned entrepreneurs and experience managers in China about their business and experience in the country. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew David, the founder of Dashi Consulting and its podcast, China Paradigm. Joining me today is a specialist of the spy industry in China. Um, it's Johnny Chang, and um, you are the founder and CEO of Spa Solutions since 2003, 17 years. Can you believe that? Did you imagine that you would have uh, this company for nearly 20 years when you started in 2003? I believe we never see how far it can bring us to start a business. You are a beauty therapist with an um, ITEC accreditation, I'm not sure I pronounced it correctly, and a professional lecturer. Uh, you participate in a lot of uh, activities within the industry. Uh, official judge for a Asia Spy Awards, World Spa and Wellness Awards, Global Wellness Travel Awards. I didn't know there were so many awards in this industry. But you're also a guest lecturer for Jinjiang International Hotel Management, for instance. And you speak at many events, IMF London, Cosmoprof, which is uh, more about, about cosmetics, right? Uh, Asia, Hong Kong, Hospitality Forum, uh, Spa, very close to to two industries, I believe, cosmetics and hospitality. And we are going to try to understand how, how they interconnect with each other in, uh, in this uh, interview. Your customers um, are very prestigious. Uh, you have been working with Ritz-Carlton, JW Marriott, Kerastars, Sofitel, uh, and many others. So to tell people who are listening to know us more about uh, what you do, um, your concept is to provide consulting to the spa and training uh, to get more efficient, more selective, and to be sober and picky uh, on the people working within the spa and the efficiency. I believe the spa industry was coming from people, uh, craftsmanship, people were uh, basically loving a, a spa, but not maybe thinking too much about the economics. And you are helping them to understand about business, about the economics. So you provide strategic business planning, brand strategy, packaging as well. And I'm, I'm curious to know why you provide packaging for spa, concept positioning, and other professional services which are needed for current existing spa and future spa. Of course, on the high end level, where actually the training and the relationship are key. Thanks for being with us, Johnny. And uh, could you tell us more about your company in terms of size? We got the numbers of seven people in your team based in Shanghai. Uh, could you tell us more? Yes, of course, Matthew. Good morning. Uh, thank you for giving me this chance to uh, to interview me. So uh, uh, let me start from. Um, a bit introduction of our company. Um, let me start from that. You know, our culture must be lived. As I always speak to our, all my clients, especially my foreign clients. You know, Ch China is a massive market, and you only need to get a very small portion of it to make your brand valuable. And uh, but it is also an extremely crowded and different one. We are seeing foreign investment you know, struggling to get their glow on as competition continues to intensify and the culture is so different and the buying behavior transforms in the local market. So as an experienced multiple, um, multicultural spa and wellness beauty industry strategist, and we understand, you know, the different culture, you know, how different culture impact our industry. Um, uh, for instance, you know, uh, we worked for uh, quite a few brands like uh, JW Marriott and uh, even a Chinese-owned, self-owned um, industry brand called Brilliant, you know, Brilliant. Formal name is Brilliant, Spa and Result. And uh, they need some culture, very, very good culture from uh, foreign countries. And uh, they also need practical business-driven uh, techniques which is quite uh, rare to, to be available in China's market. So they approach us. For instance, why I say that? You know, because of the, uh, most of the, the majority of the revenue of a spa or wellness center are coming over, coming over from both treatment sales and the retail sales. What do you mean by retail and sales? So the retail sales are the products, right? 
yeah, the skincare products or or other products like a, a bathing suit, you know, something like this, you know. So you need to um, be aware of the retail sales of your hotel spa or uh, even a day spa. You need to be taking care of that uh, because you know there's a format. Yeah, very interesting. And the, to us, you know, there's a formula um, when your retail sales of treatment cells reach 19% and your premises is safe, is healthy, the revenue is healthy. But um, unfortunately, uh, the the average... You you said 90% or 19? 19, 19, 19%. Very very precise. uh, okay, yes. uh, ninety. How did you come with this number, nineteen percent, and not twenty percent? Because it looks like you could round it at twenty percent. You say nineteen percent should come from sales, yeah. uh, retail sales. How does it come? Where does it come from? Coming from experience, uh, analysis, uh, uh, calculations you made. No, from the data is well? no, the data is from the calculation, uh, it, which includes you know um, the revenue return and the ROI and the, and and the one. Uh, one special term we call the um, PNP, profit and performance. Okay. Uh, we so, maybe yeah, we precisely. Go back into the economics of a spa, more in details later on. Um, what you provide uh, and I, I, is personalization skills and retail sales skills. So, yes. I, I give, I, it gives me the feeling that personalization skills is more about the treatment uh, at the treatment level. Uh, and the retail sales skills is, is for the skincare product. And you talk a lot about personalization. Could you say a few words about personalization? Mm-hmm. And another key word you're using a lot is protocol. Could you say a bit more about mm-hmm. personalization skills and uh, protocol? And then we will go more into detail of the spa the breakdown of spa cost and, and, and economics uh, and mm-hmm. the industry uh, in, a, in a third part. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, you, you raised up a very... Uh, interesting and very uh, fundamental question of the spa business, you know, uh, personalization. For instance, you know, people are coming over to a spa not for only physical uh, problems. Wellness and spa and wellness is uh, like, a, like a ball, you know. It in- should include physical, mental, and uh, emotional. So, to be able to do that, you know, uh, properly in your spa industry, um, you need to have all the treatment and the retail sales personalized. For instance, you know, um, this morning you are interviewing me. So um, I, w- I had a quite a late night last night. So, you know, uh, at the moment, if I am a guest, I walk into a spa. So I need to be relaxed. I need to be relaxed. But... And you are interviewing me. I can't relax myself at the moment. So if the guest is me, so I need a treatment, cannot put me into sleep for too long. I only, uh, I'm, you are interviewing me, so I can't afford it, you know, to be sleep, sleeping, you know, to feel drowsy. So, you know, um, I need to be energized. So, the therapist or the front desk receptionist needs to judge, needs to find out what I need in the next 10 minutes or one hour. So I have to keep myself energized, not sleepy. I see. And you yes. think that you are, uh, your company is a bridge between East and West. My, my understanding is that uh, the spa industry concept was much bigger in Asia than in the West in some way. Uh, so when you say bridge in East and West, what do you mean? Do you mean actually helping those big uh, hotel chains like Ritz-Carlton and big cosmetic brands like L'Oreal? And you have a picture behind you, actually, because some people will only listen and listening to us of L'Oreal. Um, and so... Uh, is it what you do, basically helping those companies, uh, those big cosmetic companies and hotel companies, understanding this spa culture and beauty culture, which is actually, my feeling, bigger in Asia than in the West, if, I understand, if, if my understanding is correct? Yes, uh, the service quality, you know, actually, um, 
in in Asia, you know, of the spa is uh, better than the uh, than from the European side. You know, of course, you know the culture is like this, but uh, there is obviously a, a huge amount of the cultural differences. For instance, you know, China, you know, um, China cus- consumers are very uh, familiar with the online sales, in Taobao, and and from the last few years, you know, it's so mature. Um, especially after the um, pandemic, you know, people are so used to, to online purchasing, so they don't need to go to um, they don't need to go to the um, physical shops anymore. So if you want to make them to buy your treatment and to buy your um, buy your products, and you really need to understand that they are culture. Or give me a reason why they have to come over to our spa to uh, to be pampered and then buy the p- products or the treatment. It's impossible. So uh, to most of the foreigners, and they don't understand the culture. And the culture, I just cannot teach you my culture in uh, in one or two days. They all thought you know they should do the same thing as they are doing open? at home. Which I was born in Shanghai, actually. Shanghai, okay. You know what I mean, yeah, I was born in Shanghai. And, and, yes. and you, you, you are tr- you are being trained in 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 Australia and uh, in in the UK. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I took my study. You know, actually, the beauty. Uh, well, you mentioned in the ITC is called ITAC. So I took my study in Australia, and. Uh, and and uh, uh, in London as well, so um, I understand the cultural difference, how important the cultural difference, and uh, make it happen. And so decided, you know, to set up the company in Shanghai to bridge between East and the West, and uh, and make their dreams come true, and or or, or um, make their uh, dreams to be reality, you know. You you started uh, talking about uh, COVID and the pandemic, the impact of pandemic. Pandemic. That's a very good um, yeah. a transition to one of the topic I wanted to to talk about with you. What has been the impact of the pandemic um, on, in the industry? To to put in a context, uh, today is uh, June second, twenty twenty, and uh, I think uh, the spas have a shut down for one or two months in most of the cities in China in February, even March. So it's certainly a very sizable impact, economically speaking. Um, but um, what, what would be the short-term and long-term impact of it? Short-term, uh, do you feel that now it, it's recovered? It has recovered? And long-term, do you feel that some new tools have been implemented, some, um, some uh, new practices, new interests? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, actually, you know, uh, the, m- the majority of the spas were shut down uh, for more than two months. It's been almost three months. And they, uh, from a few weeks ago, uh, they started, you know, coming back, uh, open to the public. And uh, I think the coverage, uh, the recovery is uh, only covers about f- uh, 60%, 60%. And so the revenue is really damaged uh, by the pandemic. So um, by trying to get back the market and uh, most of the, the majority of the spas, you know, uh, they start uh, discounting. They give a very, very cheap you know, price. But I, I think it, this is a very short term because, you know, you have to realize that all the con- consumers are coming back to the hotel spa or the day spas, you know, not for only physical problems. So, and to yeah, to understand the impact of of the of the of the pandemic. Um, so mm-hmm. you said that they closed for three months. So three months is uh, three times eight uh, percent of the year, right? Uh, mm-hmm. One month is about eight yes. percent. It's about twenty four percent. So that means if you make less than twenty four percent of a bit of profit, uh, you could die. So what, what, what would you, and the spa, the spa business, right? The spa business is a fixed cost business. You have a lot of fixed costs. You yeah. have the rent and you have people and you have very little viable costs. Yeah. You have what? Water, a bit mm. of cosmetics, but the viable costs are low. So you can be very mm. impacted by no sales. So do, 
Uh, what what a typical profitability of a spa? Is it more than twenty five percent, or do you feel it's less than twenty five percent? And if it's less, then we can expect a f- some. I mean, maybe a sizable amount of them going going out of business. Yes, true. And uh, hotel spa are still trying to maintain. But the, uh, quite a few, you know, day spas and the beauty salons, you know, on the street, they closed down already. Quite a few uh, nail shops, you know, um, it's one part of the spa or beauty industry. So quite a few you know, numbers of the uh, nail spas all closed down. So this is quite serious. So only way to get your revenue back is uh, you have to really pick up the treatments which people really in need for instance like you know we've been disconnected from this world for for so long and the people without any sort of like a human touch nothing 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 so treatments like a immune boosting treatment is re- will be really really popular so uh, a few hotel spas noticed that and they they introduce you know the human uh, the immune uh, boosting treatments and the result is really good and people start coming back and are buying package of this kind of the treatments so the revenue actually is better to compare to last year march the the, uh, the the revenue of the hotel is much healthier actually it's quite amazing if you know how to introduce the right uh, treatments to the uh, guests and okay. also products yeah product sales and because, you know, um, there's a shortage of the logistic or all the reasons, you know, there is no um, short of uh, sort of the supply of the right, you know, skincare products and also spa products. And the people are buying, actually, they are spending money. So if you really know how to, how to personalize your treatment, how to pamper your guests in this way, and the people are willing to spend money on the products as well. So I really witnessed that quite a few uh, hotel spas are doing that so successfully. So Matthew, I think, you know, uh, my answer helped uh, uh, explain your questions, you know. Yeah, yeah, clearly. And that, that's um, actually um, starting to answer also um, what um, is a, the third aspect of the interview. So the first one was about your company. Uh, to have a, a, an intro and mm-hmm. understanding then about COVID, the pandemic and the impact. Uh, so we understand that short term mm-hmm. is very hard with three months lockdown. And, uh, but the, the, the premium, I want to understand from your, what you're saying, premium hotel spa uh, with different segmentation, like a reboost treatment uh, uh, may actually yes. get better sales performance. And that's a good intro to the third part of, of the talk, which is about the spa industry and your, your perception, your understanding and your vision for the spa industry. What, what, how, how would you uh, uh, segment the spa industry in China? You mentioned the, the spa uh, nail shop on the street. That's certainly the lower hand. And then you are talking about the hotel ones. Uh, that's certainly the upper hand. How, how would you segment both in terms of uh, quality level, uh, price level, but also in terms of uh, identity and, 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 and services? What, what's your analysis of the market, the segmentation of the market? Uh, okay. So um, actually, you know, the service... Um, of the from the day spa and uh, um, and from uh, hotel spas now uh, are getting quite close. You know, people are getting very demanding. People are again. I repeated, you know, uh, twice or three times already because you know the Chinese consumers they don't have to go to um, some places like this to fix their physical problems. For instance, like nails. You know, you, you don't have any physical sort of problems with the nails. Most of them only fix the nails to uh, make them feel happy and look, look, oh, I feel wonderful, you know. It's totally from emotional or, or sometimes mental. You know, um, when people say, oh, you are having very, very beautiful fingernails, you know, and, and people feel happy, so happy, and they spend more money on the compliments like, like this. And it's sort of like a world of mouse. So there's... Um, no huge difference between uh, of the service between day spa and hotel spas, uh, and uh, 
the other segment is most of the hotel spas, the equipment uh, should be in average should be much better than than the day spa because they can afford it. They've got the budget uh, pre opening. They they do have the uh, budget for the equipments and uh, science science you know develops so quickly you know and uh, some of the equipments are really really powerful and uh, it reduces the labor sort of the cost from the hotel spa. So it boosts what, what your revenue kind of, as well. Yeah, what kind of equipment is reducing the cost of the the staff? I mean, I was thinking uh, more equipment for the staff to use actually uh, during the treatment and welcoming people. But I was not thinking about equipment to replace or to to make people more efficient. Could you share a bit of some equipment that hotels could could have? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, for instance, like. Um, there is a very popular treatment, you know. Um, in China, we are always saying that, you know, no lady is, is satisfied with her body because they all think, you know, I'm too fat for that, you know. The skinny, the slim, slimming treatment is really, really um, popular in China. So some of the machine, you know, you don't have to do a very strong sort of like a anti-cellulite uh, treatment. The anti-cellulite treatment can be exhausting because it covers so many steps and so different, uh, uh, so many different uh, manual movements. You know the hands-on thing. You know, so it consumes a lot of the energy away from from the therapist by creating a machine like a slimming machine and the effective one and. Uh, you re- you only need to uh, as a therapist you only need to know how to operate the machine so you don't really have to work manually like uh, so so difficult and and uh, you need to understand the body flow you know you really have to listen use your hands to listen to the body so the machine is different so the efficiency level sometimes is higher than uh, your hands on and uh, of course you know using a machine it's quite costly, more costly than hands-on, you know, a, a treatment. But the effectiveness of the treatment is really there. So people much, are satisfied with the result. How much would be such a machine you just mentioned, for instance, to, to buy? How much investment would it be? It, oh, okay, it varies. Um, it, it can be like 100,000. And the maximum, for for instance, like LPG or something, some uh, some machines like these brands, you know, big brands from these brands, uh, can cost you like easily like uh, more than half a million RMB, you know, CNY. Yeah, very feasible. Yes, so uh, it's a big investment, and in some of the day spa might not afford it, afford it, you know. So it all depends. So the only difference is between uh, between the day spa and the guest uh, hotel spas. You know, is there? I think because you know most of them so can't afford. One of the segmentation you bring is about equipment. Some spas yeah. can afford equipment and some cannot. That's really one segmentation. We also segment by yeah. price. What kind of uh, ticket would you say in your segmentation from hotel spa, day spa, and maybe another segment we have not mentioned is resort spa. Or maybe you have other, uh, you can include maybe in hotel spa, I don't know. Uh, but I was saying more in the city hotel and um, in a <clears throat> very remote place uh, resort. Um, uh, w- and maybe another segment that I've not mentioned that you, you think about. And the different pricing, t- average ticket, what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, another very, uh, very different segment of the uh, spa. There's a medical spa we call Medical spa is really popular in mainland China. And, and <laughs> um, I think, you know, 70% of the ladies, you know, they have some uh, independent tuck <laughs> and uh, injections on the, on the, on the skin, on, especially on face, you know. So, uh, for instance, like a Botox, you know, collagen and uh, hyaluronic acid is really popular uh, treatment, so-called treatment there. And the price can be very expensive. What do you call medical spa? Very expensive. 
before we go into the pricing, what, what are you, how, how do you define medical spa? Is it, is it regulated? So you need a, a certification to be able to do what you do. That's why you call it medical spa. Is it because it involves yes. surgery and putting uh, actually things be, uh, below the skin and not on the skin? Uh, how would you define it? Yeah. Okay, uh, Matthew, uh, two uh, things, you know, connected with uh, a medical spa. First of all, most of the medical spa, uh, why called medical spa? Because, you know, everything is invasive. Just under the skin, invasive, you know, it penetrates the skin. Uh, yeah, so anything to do with that, actually, you don't get the license from the administration, uh, normal administration uh, department. You have to apply for a license from the medical uh, administration. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, but you know it's for sure. You need a license, different license. Second, all the treat- most of the treatments are invasive, so the price is much more expensive than the uh, uh, spa spa. Which uh, what are you talking? What are we talking about then in terms of price ticket, average ticket for one consumer? What would be the the average ticket for a session or for what we call the lifetime value of a consumer? Uh-huh. Um, for instance, like an injection of uh, collagen and a normal day spa or normal hotel spa, um, they don't have any treatment like this. So I can only quote you the price, for instance, like a, 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 a shot of the collagen uh, serum or something into your skin, it will easily cost you like a 10,000 each treatment. Okay. IMB, I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a huge difference. It's, a, it's, a, it's an investment. One treatment is enough or, or you, you need several of them? Yes. Yeah, it all depends on the uh, client's skin uh, condition. Okay. Some, sometimes, you know, some of the um, consumers, you know, they absorb the collagen uh, because of the stress or everything, you know. It, it only lasts for three months. And sometimes, you know, for, yeah, for certain clients, you know, one injection can last for six months. So it all depends on the personal uh, different uh, differences, you know. Yeah. And when we talk about so the hotel spa, yeah. uh, what, what's the ticket that uh, are expected from a client? Then we, so we have the medical spa, which is, I think, is the highest t- ticket, right? Uh, so it can be yeah. 10,000 more. Uh, basically, ten thousand would be the average, uh, as you said. Uh, and then mm-hmm. uh, we, yeah. we may have the hotel spa, and then we may have the day spa. What what pricing are we talking about? Um, hotel spa, you know, the, the price five star uh, self, hotel self owned, you know, spas. You know, the price range um, covers from one thousand around one thousand per treatment to maximum two thousand. Okay. Because much more than that, in uh, you. Um, will not be popular because, you know, Chinese consumers, again, they need to see the fast result. They are not patient at all. I see. Yeah. So Everything see, works instantly. So one segmentation is equipment, less equipment. Third segmentation is medical or non-medical, medical, hotel, day spa. Yeah. And the, the third way of seeing yeah. the... The, the market is about pricing, let's say 10,000 uh, GMB, so 1,500 US dollars um, for one session, yeah. uh, more 1 to 2,000 GMB, which is 150 USD, and then the day spa, which would be about much lower, could be half of it. Yes, you know, yes and no. Some of the nice day spas now, the, the price is, uh, there's no difference between. Uh, hotel spas and the day spa anymore. Um, the only difference is there's a uh, 10% of the service charge and the 6% of the uh, duty. There's the only difference between day spa and the hotel spas now. I see. I see. Yes. Yeah. Because the hotel spa, they charge you 10% service charge. So we talked about hotel, five-star hotel. We know that five-star hotel are very often uh, chains. You mentioned Ritz Carlton, yeah. JW Marriott. But yeah. are we seeing also some chains of spa in China? Uh, I believe I, I saw in the past the, the name of iSpa, which is, a, I think, a Chinese chain. Yeah. 
of spa. Uh, what, how big mm. the, the chains of spa are in China? Is it um, a minority of spa or is it a big chunk of the, of the, of the market? How do you analyze the, the impact of chains? We understand the power of chains. You can, have, you can mm. get, have access to them in different cities. You can have a loyalty program. You have a standard services, so you know what to expect. And you have more training or sophistication. And that'd be actually more equipment as well within those chains. So what, what about those chains and the development of those chains in China? Actually, you know, um, um, the outsourcing, uh, iSpa is an outsourcing company. So most of the, they start from Beijing, uh, from actually one of my, pro, uh, one of my uh, uh, cases, actually. It started from the JW Marriott in Beijing, Huamao. When did it start? So it's out uh, year 2008, uh, late because of the crisis from the United States. So many hotel spas start outsourcing to the outsource uh, spa companies, you know. Therefore, you know, for instance, like the I spa, you know, getting more and more popular and they took over from the hotel spas, uh, self-owned hotel spas, you know, more and more. And now uh, they, are, they are everywhere in Shanghai, in Beijing, and it's a Beijing company. But they are here in Shanghai. Of, of course, you know, there are quite a few, you know, Shanghai-based companies, you know. They start uh, taking over the hotel spas from the self-owned spa, uh, from the landlord, you know, actually. So uh, they are getting more and more popular, uh, including, um, I think, uh, Anders in Shanghai. Now it's managed by, uh, by ISPA. So Anders, actually the, the price, uh, which is the hotel. yeah, Anders, Anders in Shanghai, in Xintiandi, yeah. yeah. Now it's uh, run by, uh, by ISPA as well. So um, they're, they're there. And uh, of course, you know, to compare with the service uh, quality, they still need to improve quite a lot, as I said, like uh, personalization rules. And then at the moment, they don't know how to do it, you know, how to do it. And it's so important and it's so fundamental to, to our future guests. So only difference is there. And they, they, they are rich and they can afford, you know, machines, you know, equipments, you know, they're all there. So uh, the example actually I just uh, got from iSpy may not be the best one then because they are working many within hotels. What are independent chains? Uh, are there some big independent chains? I'm thinking and so uh, in the market, a, ma uh, a player like Dragonfly, for instance, or uh, other players yeah. which could be uh, outside the hotel, independent, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. having a pretty big impact on the industry. Uh, how do you analyze them and do you have some names in mind? You know, is, it, is it something happening or is it something I'm over, overthinking about? Uh, yes. It, it, well, during the pandemic, you know, they, they suffer as well because they've got too many uh, uh, shops. For instance, like uh, there's a, a very, very good uh, chain called um, Green Massage. You mentioned the Dragonfly and the Green Massage is younger than, uh, <laughs> than uh, Dragonfly, of course, but uh, it developed much more shops than Dragonfly, so Green Massage. But uh, during pandemic, you know, um, they had some serious problems as well because um, the revenue, because of the revenue. So um, I think it, they are going to pull out from a certain uh, shops and then let other people run that, but uh, they're still, uh, to compare with the small or chains, small names, they are still quite strong. So uh, especially in the, the one uh, in K11 in Shanghai, and they are doing really well. They're doing really, really well. So, um, yeah, yeah. But maybe you want to mention all the players. So you, you said Dragonfly is one, one of them, uh, uh, older, uh, yeah. green, they green, yeah. green massage. massage. Or, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is big, bigger, but uh, seems to have suffered. So we may have a recomposition of the market uh, after the pandemic. Some some locations may be taken over by others, and uh, they may have to scale down a little bit. Uh, so that those are the chains, the main chains. You have the hotels, uh, yeah. self-operated yeah. yeah. or outsourced. You have the chains, and then you have the independent ones. Am I am I missing anything yes. in the market? Or that that's the basic structure. This is the basic structure, yeah. 
actually. You know, some of the, the uh, call, call themselves spa, but they're beauty salons, you know, for instance, like CNE, it's a big, uh, uh, now they are calling themselves, you know, a spa. Actually, beauty salon. But they are, they are quite strong as well. That before the pandemic, they used to have 150 uh, shops around China. Yeah, 150 shops, you know, it's, it's such a huge, you know, number. And uh, therefore, they, they, were, they were bought three times already. So now the, the used to be pri- private owned. And now it's sort of like a IPO, you know. Okay, it's listed. A compass yeah, of yeah. Green Massage, Green Massage and Dragonfly, yeah. how, many, how many shops are we talking about? You mentioned 150 for the last one. Yeah, this is the CNE called CNE, CNE. and the, all the Chinese people CNE, yeah, ma- yeah. And green massage is, is less, right? You 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 feel yeah, much less, yeah. much less. Okay, yeah. Dragonfly so, only eight, eight. Okay, so when when we get like eight, twelve, we begin to be a sizable and visible chain, even in China, which mm-hmm. is a huge country mm-hmm. with a huge population. So yes. already a dozen of spa, it's 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 considered as sizable. Well, definitely CME is a really sizable size. It doesn't matter. You know, it's like a huge, huge, huge um, uh, chain already. It's a huge train, a chain already, but, you know, something huge, you know, must have some huge problems to, to, be, to be fixed as well. Because, you know, so uh, think of the staff, you know, um, how many staff they, they, they are hiring. And uh, it is really a serious problem when uh, during the pandemic, you know, <laughs> and so many people you still need to pay, you know, and yeah. you, you don't have any revenue from. So, um, so seriously, after this pandemic, and then you really need to find a, a new way. Um, I don't think, you know, entirely pandemic is a, a bad thing. There's always a chance, you know, um, for you. Um, some of the hotel spas, you know, they shut down uh, more than two months. But uh, at the at, before the end of the shutdown, and they start training. I see. It was internal people training. Train people. You mentioned so important. You mentioned the number of people. We found the research, but it's always difficult to, to have an average. But saying that every spa has an average of 7.8 full-time staff, uh, including the spa manager and receptionist. Um, what, what's a typical uh, uh, spa, um, if we take this, this um, segmentation again from hotel, from day spa, and from chain? Uh, are, we are talking about a dozen of people, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct, uh, a bit less, maybe. So let's say eight, eight, nine people. And uh, c- could you could you share with us a bit of the uh, structure, economic structure, business structure of a spa? We understand that one of the main causes is real estate and uh, staff. Um, and mm. then, uh, what are the main revenues? So um, uh, we understand that treatment would be like eighty percent sales sales from. Uh, Retail, you said about 20%, or it has to be at least 20% to be profitable, or 19% to, to take your, 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 your numbers. And also, other sources of revenues, as far as I understand, could be loyalty program, gift card. Before 2012, before regulation changed, and it was more strict on gift cards. I feel like gift card was a big uh, stream of revenue to you. Uh, would, you mind men- would you mind sharing a bit your uh, understanding of the streams of revenue and the cost structure of a spa? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, um, yes. Oh, this is a very, very good question and a point, you know. And uh, hotel spas are very strict. You don't, you, you can't, for instance, like a wellness in the, in the hotel, in the hotel wellness, it divided into two parts. One is the, for instance, like the fitness and fitness, you are able to sell the membership card, but the spa part, you can't, according to the government regulation, you can't sell um, the membership card. So most of the hotel spas, they are selling the membership card of the gym of the fitness and which gives you a few um, sort of uh, benefits for using a few times, you know, treat, spa treatments, but you can't do other way around. You, you just can't do it. And the day spas, they are used to um, 
sell, you know, a membership card, you know, though it's stipulated by the government, you cannot sell anything more than 5,000 RMB. If you want to sell, uh, there, there used to be a, a massage parlor chain called Kangjing because they sold too much membership card and then finally they couldn't uh, afford it. So they shut down. The prime, so a yeah. lot of people suffered. Yeah, the problem of, of, uh, um, of the membership card, I feel there was a bit of regulation about the gifting as well to avoid that gift would be too big and uh, after turn 12, but also yeah. because of yeah. what is negative working capital. So basically, you give the money to the spa before yes. they spend, they have a lot of cash, they, yeah. they be, they're rich, they spend it, but actually they have yes. debt towards their clients and they go bankrupt. And this yes. has been seen in many yes. industries. Okay, got it. So that's why actually there's a limit in terms of uh, uh, spending and membership is forbidden. So that's one thing. Is yes. Then we understand membership not possible. It's for fitness centers. No. Then there is a treatment no. in itself and there are the retail. Are there other stream of revenues or there are only those two? The majority are only these two. Yeah. So, okay. um, for instance, like, uh, yeah, like uh, um, the revenue, so called, you know, the revenue from membership card, you know, actually, this is not revenue yet until the last cent, you know, done, treatment done, and then th that's your revenue. But um, the revenue is from repeating sales. If you sell the membership card, if you, he or she doesn't come back, and uh, there's another regulation of China. So there's no expiry date of the membership card from the spa. So it means, you know, he or she paid you 10,000 for the membership card. Three years later, she can still come back to receive the treatment. But those days, three years later, the cost of everything will be going so much up. So you, you, you will be broke. You will be broke. Yeah, in, yeah. In China, definitely. That, that's a point, actually. I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't um, see before, but the cost of, making, <laughs> of doing business in China is increasing fast. Uh, and so uh, well, yes. it's, it's in some way dangerous. Yes. I see. Yes. What, what, yeah, what because, you know, they are confused with the definition. Sorry, okay. they are confused. You know, most of the entrepreneurs, you know, so-called entrepreneurs, they are confused, so much confused with the definition. They thought they collect the money. Is their money already? Actually, no, it's still their customers' money. Never touch it. Never touch it. customers' cheese. You know, you can never. So, so the more you take in, the more you are in danger. Yeah, it was very common at some point. I think it's still very common in China oh. to, to have membership card at the uh, hairdressers, Starbucks coffee as yes. well. Uh, and that's oh. a lot of yes. cash. And, and uh, that, you get discount afterwards. Uh, talking about the, yeah. the, the structure of a spa, when we talk about a good spa, a top performing spa, when, let's say the top 10%, mm -hmm. Are we talking about spa making 5 million GMB, 3 million GMB, 10 million GMB? Uh, what kind of business are we talking about? Um, actually, a few years ago, uh, when there was less competition, and actually, you know, the hotel spas, like, um, I give you one name, okay, <laughs> like the Peninsula of Shanghai, easily hit uh, 1 million IMB per month, you know, easily. I see. I see. But that would yes. be the top, right? The average yes. would be would be half of it or even a third of it? Um, average is uh, less than, much less than that, you know, a quarter of it at the moment. Okay, yeah. a quarter of it. Yeah. So two or three million yeah. would be an average? Yes. I see. So indeed, you, we can see that if on average you have about 10 people and you need to pay the rent, I'm not sure you can survive three months of lockdown, actually. After three months, you're... You, you have to have accumulated retained earnings for some time to be able to survive and to be in yeah. business for some time. Yeah, this is why I said, you know, Mathieu, look at that, you know. Um, so this is so important to create, uh, to lift up your guest experience, personalization, and the retail sales. Because, you know, without, without retail sales, you, you can't, you know, survive. And the retail sales is the quick money. It comes yeah. back so quickly. 
But that's the thing on retail you know, sales. Uh, you, you, you mentioned in some interviews, and you are mentioning now again, retail sales are key. But for me, uh, retail sales, you need to buy the product. So you need inventory. You need to freeze your money. Uh, does it mean that the retail sales margin is so much higher than the treatment margin that actually mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense? Is it, is it the reason why mm. you say that retail sales have to be pushed? It's because actually the margins are much higher and um, you don't have to actually also yes. uh, manage staff. Or maybe what I'm not seeing is that mm -hmm. the staff in cost is higher than the inventory of retail. What's the thinking behind the idea of pushing retail sales? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> Matthew, you are very, very good, you know. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll give you one uh, figure. Uh, some of the very good hotel, I mean, good, good hotel spas, their um, retail sales reach 35%. So make everything so easy. Every time you see the products sold and the spa director will be very happy today. Because you know, you are going to conclude your revenue, reach your revenue this month, and your gym will so appreciate you, you know. The, the so uh, this is really important. And uh, now, quite a few com uh, product companies, you know, they, they are willing to give you on consignment. I see. So it's but, cheaper yeah. to manage. So it, yes. So you reduce um, uh, so much of your um, your cost of the spa and the risks, and uh, so uh, you you are just sitting over there, and uh, by doing nothing, it's not right thing to do. So you really need to take this opportunity to promote your retail sales. It bring you fast, fast return, really fast. You know, for instance, like a one room per treatment room, we know how many treatment you can do per room, per staff. But retail sales, there's no limit. Only five minutes, you just talk uh, at the right point. So Not I, hard I, sales. I, my, my understanding is that uh, is a, the margin is substantial with very low cost. And when we talk about Lane Crawford, for instance, as a retailer, they take about 40% uh, of, of, of commission. Mm -hmm. When we think about Common retailers, let's say uh, hypermarket, supermarket, is more like 20, 30 percent. So I, my, my understanding is that in the spa, we, we could talk about more like 40, 50, 60 percent maybe of commission. Does it make sense? Uh, actually, uh, when we, uh, yeah, there's a suggest recommended pri uh, uh, retail price and also hotel spa normally get it, you know, like a half price. Okay, so it would be 50%. So you've got a 50%, yes, margin. And, they have and no sometimes, inventory. of course. They have no inventory to pay no. uh, ahead of time. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah. So but, not, no, um, no That's a pretty good It business. all depends on the connection. Yeah, it, it's all, it all depends on the, uh, the brand image. If you do have a brand, nice brand image and everybody wants to get into your spa and then you can talk to them with the consignment uh, ideal, idea. And uh, if you are not that strong, your brand is not that strong, you might need to pay uh, half of the price. You know, you need to purchase, you know, from the very beginning, you, you need to. Yeah. Um, is that true for five-star for five hotel uh, uh, um Brand, but is it true also for medical medical spa, and is it true for day spa mm -hmm. that the retail could reach this kind of level and this kind of importance, or is it very specific to hotel spa? No, no, no it covers for all uh, all uh, segments. Actually, you know, any any shop, you know, need to survive. They need to have the retail. Interesting. They very must have. Yeah. Does yeah. it make sense to see the industry a bit differently? Does it make sense to see the industry of spa as a retail which is selling through treatment instead of treatment which is additionally selling retail? Uh, basically, because when you get a treatment, you may use the same uh, cosmetics or products that you are going to sell. So it's a very good 
way to sell. If you want to continue to use after the treatment on a daily basis, then you need to buy it. So it's a very, very involved, very deep sales process with a very high involvement, engagement of, of, the, of the customers. Does it make sense to reverse it and to see actually the spa as a retail place where actually you have an engagement with the customer which is higher? Yes, there's a, poss- um, there's a possibility because, you know, I said uh, early on, um, we, we are so lucky to have, sometimes we, we think, you know, that way, we're so lucky to have our spa if we know how to run that. And because this is the only place um, Chinese people, again, get so much used to online sales. And, uh, but they're human beings. They come over to our spa to get connected. So if you know how to connect them, and make them connect themselves, you know, and they're hooked. They're addicted, sort of, like. So <laughs> it's so easy for you to, to promote both treatments and the products because they're there. But, oh, of course, it's your own problem if you don't know how to deal with your own clients. So you're getting less and less clients and you don't have any opportunities. So it, it's a very skillful um, skill. So you really need to know how to deal with your guests. There is one more segmentation we have not mentioned is about what we usually use in China, which is first tier cities, second tier cities, third tier cities, yeah. uh, also the Hong Kong, Macau uh, uh, market, which is very special because people... I mean, it was special last year and this year, but people travel to Hong Kong, to Macau for, for uh, buying and, and for entertainment. So what's your geographical segmentation? First tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier? Does it make sense or it doesn't make sense? Does it make sense to have Hong Kong, Macau as a specific, and maybe Zhuhai, I don't know, as a specific, uh, specific segment? How do you see in terms of geography? Oh, it does have uh, differences. Huge difference, actually. Uh, for instance, like the first tier city, like Shanghai and Beijing and Guangzhou, three first tier cities, they are totally different. They are totally different because, you know, geographically, uh, um, Hong, uh, Guangzhou is so close to Hong Kong. But Guangzhou and Shenzhen, two big cities now. And the Guangzhou and Shenzhen is different because it's Shenzhen, the people are from everywhere. Guangzhou, still local people, is the majority of people. So they, they, they love slow time. They love to go to the, um, what do you call the yam cha, you know, something, you know, in the morning, like at 10 o'clock, if you ask them to do a treatment, spa treatment, no way. But Shenzhen is so modern and so international. It's just like Shanghai, you know. People are willing to have a quick um, physical or emotional fix, you know, during the lunchtime, you know. Oh, very interesting. You know, yeah. they, they and love to. Shenzhen, uh, <laughs> I, I feel that Shenzhen also, because it's a new city, you may have less historical things and fewer places. And it's, it, the spa may be exactly. a good place, actually, to, to, to do something different, to enjoy something. You're uh, you right. Have opportunities yeah. to, to actually uh, enjoy museums or old, old, old areas like you have in, in Shanghai and Beijing. What is the city which is, you feel has the highest potential in China? City or province uh, in terms of the spa potential? Actually, there's not huge differences. Only the okay. culture, again, only about the culture differences. C- culture differences, you really need to expect, uh, respect that, you know, you really need to. If you don't do any research, you think, you know, everything is the same, you know. Well, your business will be in danger. Yeah, we do a huge amount of the uh, bridging things, you know, between East and West. And even in China, we, we bridge them, you know, to, by telling them in the right, what is the right thing to do and what is not the right thing to do and stop it. Yeah. What about then what we call the second tier cities? I, my, my, um, I, I'm not very comfortable with the segmentation first, second, third tiers because for me, Hangzhou... Mm-hmm. Is, 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 I don't see the difference between, too much difference between Shanghai and Hangzhou. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure I see mm-hmm. a lot of differences uh, also with uh, Suzhou um, and, and Tianjin, for instance. Uh, so um, how, yeah. how would you segment the different cities? Do you see 
some segment of cities where there is an increased interest in high high level spa or openings. Uh, um, what, do, do you see some geographical dynamics in in China? Um, I think you know China is uh, quite uh, complicated <laughs> in this way. Uh, this time they don't count you know second tier city geographically, they, but sizely, you know. According to the size, you know, Hangzhou is so close to Shanghai, and because of the size, much smaller than Shanghai, so they call it a second tier. Actually, they are buying or they are purchasing、uh, power is not weaker than、uh, Shanghai's, you know, at all. Yeah, actually, it、yeah. can be even higher because real estate could be lower.、Uh, like you know, when you look at、yes. Suzhou and Nanjing,、yes. uh, the the income could be similar, a bit lower, but the real estate、exactly. is much lower. Then you have more disposable income. Yes, is it affecting? Do you think the spa、yes. industry, or am I am I overthinking on it? No, no, no.、Uh, you're you're right. It really hurt, you know, by by the pandemic as well. Yeah, they just open up, and Hangzhou is quite one of the strictest.、Um, City to control、um, the pandemic、um, during the pandemic, so it's really really、uh, tough. And now it's just opening up, and all the business,、um, for instance, like a Yingtai, you know, one of the big department chain, you know,、uh, start started recovering. So、uh, we we are so happy to see that. Um, yeah, so we 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 picked a few of your、uh, of your services, and one of the service you're mentioning is to improve sales by seventy percent after training、uh, of a week,、mm-hmm. if I'm correct.、Mm-hmm. Could, could you share a bit、yes. of quick fixes? Because we call, in, if in one week you can improve the sales seventy percent, we talk about quick fixes, something you can very easily improve and and execute. Are there more about retail? Are there more about treatment? Are there more about personalization? Protocol, as you are saying, what are the main directions you are working on to get your sales improved by seventy percent? Yes,、uh, this is very good. You know, only thing is we are going to teach them how to improve the personalization.、Uh, remember the treatment、uh, I mentioned because you were interviewing me, so I cannot be feel feeling、uh, sleepy. So the the therapist or front desk. Receptionist needs to find out what I need today. Even though I complained that oh my body is so tired, I need to sleep. You know I didn't sleep well. But don't listen to me. You have to really find out. You know what I'm going to do later on after the treatment. So if you know how to finalize, you know by offering a, me a right treatment, I will come back and.、Uh, I talked about that. You know, the revenue constant consistency of the revenue is from repeating clients, and so difficult to find the repeating clients. You need to spend six more times to find a new client instead of keeping an old client. So think of the ratio. We, yes, we see that you have <laughs> seen a lot of numbers and so on to be able to come up with ninety percent at least of retail sales, six times more time, six six six.、Uh, It's six times longer to actually、uh, get a new client than getting the retain retain returning、yes. client.、Uh, yeah. I, I like to. We、yeah. talk about finance improving sales seventy percent, and we talk also about profit.、Uh, we we mentioned that the ticket on average uh, for um, um, a five star is between one thousand to two thousand RMB for one session.、Um, mm-hmm. But you mentioned that、mm-hmm. it's key to sell so retail product. But the retail product for me,、mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I as far I understand. Reaching one thousand RMB would be pretty high as a sale.、Uh, so, does it mean that、mm. treatment would be one thousand, two thousand, and the retail? When you sell in retail, could be maybe uh, uh, less than one thousand, four hundred. What are we talking in terms of ticket of retail? Because it seems that retail is very important. What do we talk about in terms of、mm. one client, one product、uh, per unit? My understanding is that the pro- the price of the product would be higher. In Spa than in Sephora and other places. Where where are we? Are we much higher or similar prices? Oh,、uh, we have the very similar prices. So、uh, to be able to sell something, it all depends on the guest experience you offer. And people are spending money like a, a Valmont. You know, this is the、uh, professional sort of a brand、uh, you rarely see in the Sephora or. Uh, or space and K, you know, you rarely see、uh, them there. But 
they are not even any cheaper than La Mer, for instance, like uh, the, the famous, you know, most uh, favorable uh, brand uh, for Chinese um, consumers, you know. But Vermont is not cheap, any more cheap, any less than a cost of a La Mer. So people, they do spend money on the items. They, they don't compare with the products to the treatment. They only compare with the service quality. So once you can make their skin cell, remember how good you are, they buy. I see, I see. Uh, yes. you, you said in one of the, the interviews you had, uh, you said that more and more hot spring resorts are transformed from sauna style to spa style. Uh, that said, more than 85% of therapists are not qualified. This problem needs to be sorted out quickly. When, and is it, how, do you feel that uh, it's changing, still changing now? Uh, do you feel that's still the case? And can you explain what happened? Uh, it's changing slowly. Because, you know, for instance, you know, people are so much aware of uh, like um, IFA certification, like IFA is an international um, um, fragrance um, association or something, you know, like aromatherapy, aromatherapy. So uh, uh, the certificate is really uh, popular and people want to have that. But the problem is that after they acquire that, they still don't have any practical practices. For instance, like the guest experience in the five-star hotels or even whole five-star hotel, you know, guest experience is really important. So with a hard sort of like a certificate, you know, there's not much use to help to uh, generate your revenue without knowing, without understanding the guest experience, how important the guest experience is. So this is the something missing but it's changing it's changing people more and more people are very interested in to acquire uh, a certificate from ifa i'm, I'm thinking about uh, accreditation and certification the spa business is linked to real estate to cosmetics uh and um yeah. to hotel hospitality resort uh, when we think about uh, uh, the, the, the people who should know about beauty, treatment, and so on, they are cosmetic companies. Are cosmetic companies providing training, providing certification, accreditation to those spas, or that, that's, um, that's something which is not existing, it's more fulfilled by professional associations? Yeah, they, uh, they do, you know, especially in the, in the foreign countries, you know, uh, they are quite strong. The product company training is quite strong. But uh, there's a, a problem, as um, uh, you understand that as well. Uh, I mentioned in my uh, presentation or, or wherever, you know, or my lectures, you know. Um, again, China's got different, different uh, market because the majority of the trainers even from the product company, they are not really well trained. And they only know, they are very strong in the treatments, you know, itself. But the treatments for whom? The treatments for human being. And you have to be human first and understand what the human needs. So this sort of the lessons or training or coaching is missing in China. So they really need to wake up. Not so only hands on company, how good cosmetic companies yes. are involved in it, or is it something that every spa or chain spa or hotel have to do with themselves? We, 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 with you, uh, uh, I believe, but with, with the other cosmetic companies sometimes hiring you to train spa. That's my, 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 my question. Are uh, some cosmetic companies, cosmetic companies have their own training as well uh, and they may work with you to yeah. actually implement it. Is it something happening? Or yes. again, it, it's uh, because I understand that retail can be key for them, for, for the mm -hmm. spa. So then the relationship mm -hmm. with cosmetic companies mm -hmm. could be strategic. Yes. Uh, the product company do hire us, you know, um, as the coaching uh, or a or training, you know, uh, expert. For instance, I'll I give you some uh, statistics, you know, um, L'Oreal, we start uh, training and uh, creating the uh, service protocols, you know, for L'Oreal uh, in uh, 2018. And uh, 
until 2019 June, and its statics, not our statics, and the L'Oreal statics indicated that consumer retention and the customer conversion rate had reached 88% and 38% respectively. So it's a huge change. What are we talking it's a huge about? Change. Which clients? Clients from SPA or clients generally speaking from L'Oreal? From the product companies as well. So L'Oreal belongs to the product company. So they hire us yeah. to train there, to coach their, their uh, staff. And oh, after okay. our coaching? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, their customer retention you know, rate reached 88%. So it's a big, big number. Yeah, it is. So they were very satisfied. I believe a big yeah. number and a big increase. But uh, I, here I'm a bit confused now because you're focusing on spa and you're training on, sp- on personalization protocol and so on. With a company like L'Oreal, uh, mm-hmm. they have shops, uh, they have mm-hmm. corners. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. they don't. They just have the salesperson mm-hmm. in, a, in a Sephora shop. What kind of training do you provide them, and how do mm-hmm. you help? The same, the same training because in L'Oreal. Uh, we, we've been uh, working together for last four years. They set up the beauty, small beauty salons, you know, at the counter in the department store, try to lift up the guest service to give um, the guests or the uh, consumers immediate, immediate or, or the result of the product because in the product that won't jump onto the uh, guest skin you know uh, automatically so you need to have our staff and their staff to really demonstrate on guest skin if you understand the service quality if you understand um, the the personalization and of course the result of the product will be so obvious you know and the people satisfied with that and then Purchasing rate is increasing. So very simple. So we talked about um, again to summarize your company, uh, the pandemic, and the spa industry in itself. Uh, also, uh, we we took a few uh, of your services and understood them. Uh, uh, your comments in the press as well. Um, last thing I'd like to understand. I mean, two last things. Um, one is about um, a technology. Have, have you seen any impact of technology on, on the spy industry, uh, both in terms of acquisi- uh, acquiring clients through the internet, through O2O, offline to online, online to offline, uh, e-commerce, um, or WeChat, to, to, name, to name one. That's one thing. So the internet. And about equipment. Are, are you seeing something happening with technology? Oh, definitely. Um, the, um, there's uh, one um, sort of like a fitness chain and uh, they introduce, you know, to their consumers, you know, how funky the music and uh, the music, the equipment of the music and you're playing the music to work together with the cardio um, cycles, you know, uh, cardio thing. And so make the, the training very enjoyable, not like the normal, um, uh, you, you walking on the mule, you know, and, and it feels so boring sometimes, you know, and they create some technique things, you know, about uh, playing the different kind of the music, you know, and uh, group, you know, this program into uh, with the music, right music. So something like this, you know, really stimulates, you know, uh, the, the interesting uh, interest of the of the consumers. And so the membership card, you know, I said uh, earlier on, you can sell the membership card. And they sell, they sold a lot of membership cards through that kind of the technique. Uh, it's in Tai Gu Hui, and uh, this is a very, very funky in the GM. I will find you the name, I will send you the name. Thank you. Uh, talking about the <laughs> yeah. We talk about the spa, mm-hmm. we talk about the players, we talk about the stakeholders, talking about the clients themselves. Uh, there is a, a research done by Spa China survey. Um, it seems that the yeah. generation of the 70s and 80s, uh, so born in 17 and 80s, mm-hmm. uh, um, and are, 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 are the main spenders of spa. Uh, numbers could be pretty high. 
what, what are the typical clients of a premium spa, five-star hotel spa, and medical spa? How would you describe them? Because of the price of what it is, they are certainly upper class. But uh, be, below, beyond that, uh, how would you qualify them in terms of uh, 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 aspiration and so on? It, it all depends on um, what the consumer's uh, f- favorite brand they have in their mind. Actually, for, for instance, like a peninsula, people love a peninsula afternoon tea or like the, this brand image and the people go there. It, it, it's got nothing to do with the uh, age group or, or anything. For instance, and the, the, the millenniums, you know, um, they, they are so young, but they are rich. They've got the money. They just spend. They just spend. They use their credit card or the um, the money uh, given by their parents. You know, they, they spend money. They love it. And I uh, I went to the uh, Bulgari hotel and I saw many youngsters. They, they they were spending money like no tomorrow. They are they are in the coffee shop. You know, uh, everywhere. So they bought the, the, the chocolate so expensive. Yeah, it's very interesting. The segmentation for you, it's more lifestyle than age or income. It's really about lifestyle. Of course, you need a certain level of income because you need to have the money to spend it. But then you can also think about allocating a large uh, uh, chunk of your, of, your, of your income into it on a regular basis because of the lifestyle. How would you define the lifestyle? You, 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 you associate the image of uh, afternoon tea to also those... Uh, those spa. What kind of other associations would you make? So actually, you know, I think a lifestyle impact um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, industries, you know, including the restaurant um, and a spa as well. So uh, um, it really doesn't matter um, about the edu- age group or, or, or culture because in the culture over here, uh, youngsters and, and old people, they, they spend money and they love the uh, the new uh, concept and the new lifestyle things, you know, uh, is happening here, you know. So people spend money. About clients, uh, do you feel that clients from different regions, different geographies may have different expectations for their skin? Uh, we know that um, the climate uh, could impact the skin, uh, that you have different kind of skin issues and problems when you are in Sichuan, which is very humid, or in Beijing, which is very dry, or in Shanghai, which uh, could be uh, uh, sometimes very humid too, and uh, polluted at the same time. Uh, so do, do you feel that the spa are adapting their offers to the skin of the clients, depending on geographies and uh, context? <clears throat> again, again, yeah, again, this is, uh, um, this is something missing. Uh, at the moment, most of the people, they, they, um, working, uh, workers, you know, over here and the staff and or receptionists, they, they are not very strong to analyze, you know, um, genuinely what the clients need. So this is one thing missing at, at the moment. So if you know how to wake up and, and then stick with that, uh, personalization rule and the, your, your product, you know, sells and the, your treatment sells will be Sorry, you know, we'll be sorry. You know, you've got so many opportunities, you know. Um, and uh, it, there is a difference between the skin type of uh, Eastern, um, Northern and Southern uh, of China. And then most of the uh, uh, Northern people, they do have the dry skin. And uh, a lot of product companies, you know, same cream, they've got a rich cream and a normal cream. So rich cream is, of, of course, to the people who have a dry skin type. So you, you were right, you know, if you know how to analyze, you know, how to deal with the client that just walked in, and uh, you really have to find out that their genuine needs, and then you are able to apply uh, the right then products, to- right treatment. Yes, they will come back, you know, and next time, for instance, yes, let me tell you one figure, uh, Hong Kong Four Seasons. You know what? Their retail sales, to compare to the treatment sales, reach 60%. Matthew, it's a huge amount, 60%. Indeed. Easily. Yes. So you, you know what I'm talking about. And then when your spa revenue reaches that rate, 
and Matthew, you can chat in with me for 24 hours a day, you know, because you need to worry about nothing. So think of that. And the people flying from Beijing, from Shanghai to uh, monthly to get a, re- a treatment. It's, uh, it sounds crazy, but it's a reality. It, it happens in Hong Kong. Very interesting. And they charge 3,000, yeah, 3,800 Hong Kong dollars per treatment. <laughs> yeah, there is on the premium level a really, really uh, active and, and interesting market. So yeah. thank you very much, Johnny. It, actually, yeah. uh, it's, um, it has been a very long talk, uh, more than one hour this time, uh, <laughs> it's not more than usual. And uh, how people can connect with you, uh, I, I feel that hotels, cosmetic companies and spas themselves um, w- may want to connect with you. How they can connect with you? What's your website? What's yeah. your email address? Um, uh, my uh, website is www.spartm.net. Okay. Or you can send an um, email to me. Yeah. Okay. So on, on, on yeah. I, I believe on LinkedIn, uh, the, the name of the company is Spa Solutions yes. Training and Management Consultancy. Uh, but you are uh, summarizing Spa Solution TM, right? Yes. 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 True. Yeah. Thank Correct. you very much. Thanks to two other people, Etienne Dahl and Sophia Bakhtar. Uh, without uh, whom this podcast would not be possible because they prepared a lot of documents for me to, to get ready for the, for the podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, they found uh, you uh, as well, Johnny, to, 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 um, to join the podcast. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Johnny, for being with us. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.